Hi, this is Omar from Spitfire Audio. I'm here with Geika, who's a London-based producer, vocalist and composer who's released several solo albums. He's written music for TV and the Royal Ballet, work that has been performed at the Royal Opera House. And now you have your very own library too, called War Island, which I'm a big fan of. I've been playing with the sounds over the last week, every day pretty much, and it's been a lot of fun. Um, I was thinking maybe we could just dive in straight away to see what the what sort of soundscape it is. Okay. It's just that instant lushness. It's just really full straight away, and you you're playing and get something out there, um, out of the box, which. I always love doing. What is your approach generally when you come up with these sounds? What's your process? So the approach was to make something that could be used by people who are making sort of music tracks and also people who are scoring films because I guess that reflects my own practice. I really, really wanted to make something that is a particular sound world. It's kind of a, a, a complete toolkit around a particular aesthetic. Let's have a look at another sound. We've got a bass here called Smog. It's a pretty massive sound. Yeah, you can hear there's lots going on within this sound, and I know you guys spend a lot of time at uh, Somerset House putting these together. Well, at Somerset House, as a final layer of processing, we basically re-recorded all of the samples back through a, a, a really big carnival sound system. We've kind of layered those samples over and it's controllable via, the, you can kind of mix between the original samples and the kind of super processed samples um, via the dynamics. So you can see the difference. The sound system culture can kind of be, at times, for me anyway, was a kind of unifying thing. It's like everybody in the area knows what that's about. So I guess in this, it's, it's an expression of that. We've made all of this stuff and then fed it through that, that particular thing, which is like common to everyone that everyone yeah. knows about. Since we're in the bass section, I know you played me some earlier that you were really into. Do you want to kind of bring yeah. them up again. For sure. So like, bass is a big part of the music that I make. Um, the bass has got a hit, it's got a slap, got to have low end, can't have no thin, no thin beats. This is Cyberhorn. I don't know, maybe I'm showing my age, but the kind of 80s, like, bad guy bass sounds. No, the one. It's like when you when you meet your enemies. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because all the sounds kind of it kind of either remind, remind me of like films or genres of films or things I've seen or places and time and people and sometimes quite abstract feelings that we're trying to bottle that are really particular to like that where we grew up and and all of those disparate influences whether that be kind of industrial music or shoegazy music or southern rap mm -hmm. um and grime and 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 dubstep and all of these things it's just kind of this particular idios idiosyncratic mix which i think is very particular to like South London, particularly Brixton. A lot of the sounds, in fact, all of the sounds are not made with one instrument. They are layered and affected sounds to kind of evoke a feeling more than they are like 
oh, like this is this is this particular bit of kit. It's almost like you're catching a, a feel that you had of a moment in time and yeah. want to bring that back and just having fun with that. Yeah, definitely. Sonically. There's a lot of signal processing and a lot of really sort of curated source instruments, like physical instruments, and then we've done a lot afterwards to create quite complicated sounds, which are quite easy to use. This bass is called Degenerated. It is Degenerated. <laughs> Super grainy, super distorted, kind of dystopian. I mean, the whole project is is called War Island. The sound of lockdown, I guess. <laughs> um, it was made, you know, during a lockdown. And I guess is the, the whole larger project we'll get onto is, I guess, a, a comment on, like, Britain today. And I think... speaks for itself is how we're all feeling right now um, but yeah like it's a really industrial sound which i think can work can also work well in tracks if you kind of arpeggio it and stuff like that this is another bass that's like like that it's called drill head can use it to add a, a massive amount of drama instantly in the score, but it's also a great sound for like making tracks, you know, it's kind of makes me think about grime music. Um, it's like a really London. I wanted to get the same feeling of like excitement from, I'd get from a physical instrument. So one section we haven't quite touched yet is the atmosphere uh, part. Again, just incredible sounds within here. I just love just playing a single note and just see what's what's all going on within here because yeah. there's a, a lot of movement. I just love playing it in the different registers and just see what the sounds, uh, what kind of sounds come out in, in the different uh, fr frequency range. Uh, let's have another one, Reborn. Yeah, a little wobble in there as well, which is really cool. Um, Another particular one I really like is uh, the Smooth Hospital. <laughs> Again, something when you play it, there's so much going on within the sound. Yeah. It's just really texturally interesting. It's because it's made of loads of different things. It's peaceful, or it's blissful, but like kind of also a little bit sort of discordant. One other thing uh, I've noticed within this library as well throughout is that some of the sounds they didn't keep to a sort of sweet spot if you yeah. would uh, say that but to like one to two octaves but you actually uh, made sure it's across the whole keyboard and that kind of gives it a completely different feel further down as opposed to all the way further up in the register. takes me to the 70s or something. I think without without it sounding sort of cliched or just like cats or whatever. This is a legal stretch. It's a really long sample because we kind of time stretched the original. The aim with this is to try and make something that sounds super rich and super kind of atmospheric, but without being like too blurry, you know? <laughs> yeah, this is tape stab. It's got like a kind of stereo kind of rotation. 
going yeah, they on. Yeah, like to sweep in the towel yeah. as well. Yeah, it doesn't feel like you're going to have to do a lot of mixing to mm-hmm. for it to not sound um, too artificial. Scum rain. This is one of my favourite patches. I feel like it just sounds like like London on sort of the morning after, you know. It makes you feel about going across Vauxhall Bridge at like six o'clock in the morning mm-hmm. and you just kind of see the whole city. For me, that kind of evokes these, these feelings of, um, I know, of awe from the, the, the size of it and there's so much going on. And I, I feel like this patch really, it's like a one touch score machine. This batch is called Smiley Face. From the title, you can see it's pretty ravey. It's like definitely influenced by the nightclub, kind of warehouse party culture, or like certainly our memory of it. Lower it. Yeah, I think we wanted to include a few kind of like really bonkers arpeggiated uh, sounds that just are kind of ravey. If we go to this pad, Opium. Again, it's this idea of evolution, and that comes from the sounds inspired by the hearing sounds in the real world. It's not necessarily inspired by a particular instrument or a particular, you know, a particular record or anything like that. It's inspired by hearing a record or watching a film or just hearing a sound outside. So we, we build a lot of these kind of really interesting variations and idiosyncratic things into the samples, particularly in the pads. Malevolence is another good example of this. instrument and we layered quite a lot of different things and the the signal processing after the fact was just designed to create um, something that was really quite complicated. So I was going to ask you also about the drum section that mm-hmm. you have in here. Mm-hmm. What's your approach to creating drum sounds for that? Um, I've, I've had a play with them and they sound amazing and really full on. We made a lot of the drums using drum machines was called drum machine so old 808s we like borrowed your 808 for a day and sampled it all the drums are then processed like crazy right we'd bounce them to tape to cassette to um quarter inch reel like pedals like this kind of amazing array of of kind of outboard processing um just to kind of again try and get that that instant slap. One of my favorite drum presets is machine snares because you, it's across the whole keyboard, you've got different samples. A massive amount of drum sounds <laughs> in there. If I want to play them all, I'll be here all day. We wanted to, include effectively a full drum kit of these kind of industrial processed drums and, and make them really kind of up front. Away from your bass, actually, because this is a thing that everyone has to contend with, so we really thought about that. So they... The drum sounds are... The, the drum sounds are all pretty punchy. Mm-hmm. Vim Kicks is another example. Mm-hmm. 
So, I mean, it's like layered. Like each, each note is completely different, a different combination of layers. War Island is really, the drums in it are really like designed to just be used out of the box. Like, you know, we've, we've processed them, we've layered them. It's, it's works really well if you're using them to make tracks, like, you know, music tracks as opposed to just scores because the drums are, they're a particular thing, which I guess is really connected to the, the sort of records that I make. This one's Lethal Chops really encourages you to like, just like make beats with it. Like we wanted to, all the drum sounds to kind of like feel like you're using a drum machine, but just at your keyboard. It sounds like this. <laughs> It's, it's kind of that feeling of using a drum machine where the, it, you know, the sound comes out of the drum machine is what the drum machine makes, which is, I guess, quite different from often using software to make drums because it's like, it kind of gives you a drum sound which they don't expect you to use plugins to, to kind of build your sound. But old school drum machines, they just kind of come out like that and have a, have a character. Again, just to demonstrate also the processing on the drums, I just love how the character changes quite a bit. So you can kind of really just place them uh, mm. differently throughout all of the drum samples that you have here, which I think is really cool. It just gives you a little bit more variety of, um, and something to play with. The, the dynamic slider when it comes to the drums has the effect of being able to help you place your drums really subtle, really subtly, like tone in terms of tone difference um, and punchiness, which I think is great because I mean that's how it works, right? It's, it's effectively spatially placing them in the room. You also have a really great vocal section here that has been treated. Can you tell us how? I do a lot of vocal processing um, on my own records. I made like choirs out of my own voice and resampled sounds to create new samples. And then we kind of processed after and like back and forth in and out of the computer. Um, and this kind of interchange between like this sort of chained up um, vocal processors kind of sound like drones. In this case, this is vocal drone. Often the like the the samples are of slightly different length, and so I guess the effect that I was trying to create is of like lots of voices, even if you just press one note. I really like the one that you have in there, just called ah. Uh. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. I I felt like at the time I was into a lot of like jungle music, kind of from nineties jungle music, and a lot of the like vocal chops that are in those records which are sampled from kind of dance hall records or just they're just vocal chops i just kind of felt like i want a whole keyboard of that like and just that yeah. <laughs> i had I, I worked in a school where i had to make a sound which was a, supposedly the most terrifying sound possible and so i started doing all this research into what makes people like afraid distorted or discordant artificial sounds don't really sound scary to humans. In fact, they can be desirable. We mm. might have distorted strings or distorted keys, but organic sounds, when they're distorted, it kind of triggers something in people. Right, yeah. And it's why lions' roars are terrifying. Yeah. It's, 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 it's something uh, discombobulating for people. This is vocal up. I personally, when I'm um, composing, want a, a kind of ARP sound, but like not, not synthy, like mm -hmm. not not kind of digital or just kind of artificial sounding. I want it to sound kind of organic. Um, and I don't know anyone who can sort of sing that. <laughs> <laughs> so I want it to be like exactly repetitive um, and I just want a touch of a button. 
Yeah, you don't have the typically ethereal sound within the vocals here. You kind of have these rhythmic elements mm. in there. Um, you have all these textures. Mm. Um, I love that it's really versatile in the sense what it can actually do rather than using it as pad sounds. Yeah, like a lot of my records have vocal, like a lot of the sounds are made out of vocals we would never know and stuff like that. And I, I kind of wanted to represent that in the vocal section. For me, it's like a practical tool to be able to use all the time. I might not be at my studio, I might be at home, I might be overseas, but I want to get all of that source, right? I want mm -hmm. to get kind of access to all of this arcane kind of setup, but like recorded down. Someone's once, once described my records as like the sound of like the memory of the club, like leaving the club and that's what's going around in your head once you've left as opposed to like being really direct dance mm -hmm. floor music. And I've kind of, the more that I've grown as a, as a composer, I've kind of lent into that. I'm at the point now where people are kind of coming to me because they want all of this cinematic ambient stuff in their records. And it's kind of interesting. Yeah, <laughs> it, no, that's, a, that's the ideal yeah. to, uh, yeah, people coming to you for your sound. People always sort of say when I'm making tracks that your music sounds expensive. And <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? And I think it's because it's that cinematic thing which people automatically associate with like high production value and I guess confidence to be like, hey, like I don't need to like grab your attention every second. Mm -hmm. So a lot of my music gets used in the dance world because it's danceable, it's rhythmic and it, it knocks on the low end, but you don't have any of the kind of gimmicky pop things because I, I really don't like those things. I'd rather try and put terrain in my music with notation mm -hmm. than sound effects. Do you have a chance to use some of these sounds, or I guess even the other way around, where mm. they've been inspired by the work that you've done already? This uh, library, truth be told, is... It's kind of, I've obsoleted myself. And I just find all the time, I'm like, you know what? Let me just reach for this because it's coming out like where I want it to be. Um, and it's mixed and all these processes have been done. All the time's gone into creating these really rich sounds um, that they just, they fit nicely into my mixes. They kind of do what I want them to do. How would you hope for other people to be using this library? I want people to just create new music, whether it's using this library to to score interesting things in a way that's kind of a bit more experimental than is they may be used to, or they're trying to push the the boundaries of what 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 they know without necessarily investing thousands and thousands into all of this hardware. Um, and I also want record producers to use this to like make new music and to experiment with new forms of kind of street music or synth music or just however however the sounds talk to them, but to make records with it 100 percent. I'm hoping that you know people are just inspired to try new things. I think the sounds are surprising um, and different. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check out the walkthrough and if you haven't subscribed it, you can do so or like. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.